What's up guys? We are back with part two of the video series where we are messing with these laptops. This is the brand new one that I just picked up on Monday, May 1st at Best Buy. And we have not opened it yet. We're going to do that on camera. Okay, so we shifted the camera over here. And we're going to open this for the first time. I've already cut the seal on the box, but I have not messed with it otherwise. So let's see what we got here. The one thing I like about this box versus the other two is the box actually has like a kickstand and it stays open. So this is what we got well, until I hit the box. This is what we got. Let's this up a little bit so we can see. Let's make sure I keep moving my mic so that comes through okay as well. The laptop, we're going to set that aside for right now. See what else do we have in the box? We got the usual user guides, nothing spectacular here. Just all very basic information, nothing you really need. Got the power brick right here. And it's a 20 volt power brick, 200 watt. Looks like all of the Asus laptops have the same power connector. There's the other end of the power cord right there. That is going to be it for everything in the box. So let's put that aside. Very similar packaging to the other two that we've opened up. Okay, so right now there is definitely a difference. This has got more of a almost gunmetal type feel and look to it versus the Intel ones. Don't mind the fingerprints on the on the lid. This is definitely more of a regular plasticky type. This I don't know if it's actually metal but it feels like it is. It's kind of, I think that's actually metal. I don't know how well this is translating on camera here, but it's a faint gray. That is actually a metal lid. That is really cool. Ryzen 7 series right here. All the information. Get that on camera somewhat viewable. We got one USB port on the right hand side. On the left hand side we have the power port which is in a different location than it is on the other laptop. The other laptop the power ports in the very back of the case. This one the power port is more towards the middle of the case. We have the Ethernet port. We have HDMI. There are two type C USB ports and there's another regular USB port. So this, this laptop, the newest one only has two regular USBs and two type C USBs. Whereas its predecessor had one, two, three USB and the Thunderbolt port. Now, before I even go ahead and boot it up and start messing with it. I want to open it up right away just to verify that it has all the same available ports that the other ones do before I order the new parts for it. So it's very similar. We got the four screws on the bottom, the three in the middle, the four on top. Let's see if hopefully we don't have the same issue we had with the last one with the one screw that doesn't want to come out. Like I said, this is just to verify that this is the same exact upgradability. But we will cut away and come back when I've got the back panel off. Quick cut back in. So the exact same screw on the exact same side has the same exact problem where it doesn't come out of the case. So I'm starting to wonder, is that a manufacturing defect across all of them? Or is that by design? 
I don't know. The fact that it seems to be the same screw, same location on all three models, it seems that maybe it's by design and not a manufacturing defect. Like I said in the last video, it doesn't prevent you from opening up the case because the screw just stays locked into this back panel. So it's very odd. You know, I had said it has the same exact screw layout as the last computer. I am actually wrong on this. We got the four across the bottom, the three in the middle, and the four across the top. For some reason, there is an extra screw on the right-hand side here. So I just caught that. So there is actually 12 screws, not 11 for this one. So let's see. That's all the screws. Let's see how this gives me any difficulty getting the back panel off. We have to find an access point that we can get our little pry card into. I wish I had an actual proper tool for this. Even something like a flat paint spreader, like a plastic Something along those lines would work. I may actually need to... Nope, I think I got it. I was about to say I may need to go find something that is a little bit thinner. To slip into here. Let's see. I think I got it, though. Okay. Now this one is shaped a little bit different than the last one, so it's actually a little bit harder to get these clips to pop open. Got a couple of them. I may actually need to go see if I can find something a little thinner. Maybe I can get this in here. Oh, there's that one. Yeah, something like a small plastic, like, paint trowel or something. You need something thin to get under these lips. This little, my little trick with the gift card is it's almost too thick for this. Okay, I got the one side and it seems like I can just pry the rest of it. Okay. There we go. All right, so that came off a lot easier once I got the one side. So I got the battery side up, and then the rest of it came off pretty easily. All right, so now we need to verify ports on this thing. All right, so let's get this guy off. We have open RAM slot confirmed. So... You guys won't be able to see that with my flashlight on. Right here in the middle, we have one occupied RAM slot. That's going to be the 8 gig stick, and this is going to be the unoccupied slot. We have our occupied SSD right under here, and then our open SSD slot is right here. So confirmed, this motherboard has two RAM slots and two SSD slots, only one of which of each is occupied. So that's perfect. That's what we needed to confirm. So now I can order the parts that I'm going to order for this thing. Okay, what's up guys? We are back. Two days have passed and we have our components that we ordered. First we got the dual channel, the DDR5 4800s. This is a going to be a little bit of an experiment because I went with an off-brand on this one. This is from a brand that's called Silicon Power. I got these because they were like 20 bucks cheaper than all the major competition. And the one I wanted to get was like a week plus waiting time. Uh, we did stick with the Crucial brand because this is a brand that I know and trust. And SSDs are a little bit more important. RAM is pretty much all the components are sourced from the same three major competitors. I've heard Jay's Two Cents reference that before. Or not competitors, but the same three uh, producers of the chips so everybody else who gets this stuff they just slap their own stuff on it and call it a day 
But uh, let's switch over. I'll show you guys what I got here, and I'll link these in the description as well. This is the RAM we got, the DDR5, 32 gigabyte, 4800. And then this is the crucial hard drive that we got. Two terabyte, PCIe 3.0. I didn't go with the Gen 4 because I don't think I really need the faster speed on that. All right, so, but we are going to crack these guys open and slap them in this laptop. Okay, first thing we're going to do is focus on the RAM. We're going to pop out the one that's on the board already. I've got the two new sticks right here. I'm just comparing these sticks to the one on the board so I know exactly which direction these slot in. Okay. What's well, going to be really weird with these looks like all the PCB components are going to be face down. Nope, just the one stick. So this one this stick's going to be face up. The other stick is going to lock in face down. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if I can take off this heat spreader, I'm trying to see. If I can get this heat spreader off. Yes, I can. I think I'm going to try to utilize this heat spreader on these. I'm trying to get the sticker off the RAM here. Okay, there we go. I got the sticker off that one sticker RAM. We are going to slap this heat spreader right on here. Here, I might as well reuse these since they're here. Same with the one. I take the one off the back side of the stick that I took out, and we're going to slap it right on the back of this guy. Anything to help dissipate any little bit of heat, because if you get too much heat buildup on your components, especially in a laptop, it's going to start throttling your performance down. I see no reason why I shouldn't reuse these. And we're going to go ahead and stick the stick in the case that this came in. And we'll set that guy aside. And now for the 2 terabyte hard drive. Same thing as before, I don't need the provided screw that comes with it because the motherboard already has one. Click in. Little tiny screws with these things. Don't have the most steady of hands. Okay, and screw down, and we are good. You gotta be careful with those, especially if you're not using a super tiny, like, eyeglass screwdriver. You don't want to start stripping out that Phillips head. Okay, we are in. Let's fold this back down. Let's get our back panel and start putting this back together. Stuck the back panel up top there for safekeeping. I've got all the screws sitting in the back panel right now, just so I was able to put it up and not get them all mixed up. Because I just set the computer aside until I got these components, because I didn't want to open this guy up twice. So same as before, we're just making sure everything is clicking back in. This clicks in a lot easier than the other two. We're just going to screw everything down and then we'll cut back in when I get the laptop turned on and we'll get in BIOS and verify that everything looks okay. Okay, we've got everything put back together. We got the laptop plugged in. I know this is a little bit of an awkward angle from the last video, but that's about the best I can do right now with what I've got to work with. But let's see if we can go ahead and get this thing into BIOS so we can verify that everything is checking out okay. I'm assuming we're going to have the F2 button, just like on the other computers, get into BIOS. And this may also be to rescan and restart a couple times for the memory. Okay, we've got a reboot. 
So it looks like it's rescanning a memory. And we're just looking for a splash screen. It may need to retrain a few times for the memory. Oh, there we go. So it had to retrain a little bit. Um, we are showing 32 gigs of RAM. Let's see if we can get this a little bit more clear on the camera there. Got a very large uh, touchpad on this too. I didn't notice. I really hadn't looked at the front face of this laptop too much yet. But okay, we've got... We're showing 32 gigs of RAM. It looks like the BIOS utility is about the same. We are showing... There's our 2 gig drive. And there is our 512 gig drive. So, or did I say 2 gig? 2 terabyte. There's our 2 terabyte tri drive and our 512 gig drive. So everything is showing up in here. Okay, everything checks out, so we're going to get out of there. The touchpad on this is way different than what I'm used to. So it doesn't have individual buttons. The whole touchpad bottom is the button. So when I go to click, it wants to scroll. Which is really weird. I'll have to get used to that. I do have a mouse to use on the side as well. All right, it looks like Windows is going to start coming up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Windows all set up and squared away because it looks like I got to do the whole basic setup. And then we'll cut back in and I want to set up some benchmark testing and see exactly how this computer clocks in. Okay, guys, we've got Windows up and rolling now. Okay, so a quick look in Task Manager just to confirm that Windows is seeing the same thing the BIOS was. We are showing all of the RAM, all of the speed, 4,800, 32 gigs. Definitely looking good here. Now, the same thing as with the other computer. The computer does not see, by default, the new drive. So we need to go to Disk Management. Same thing as before. We're going to hit OK. We are going to New Simple Volume. I'm going to activate all of it, drive D, and just hit next, and next, and we should be good to go. Double check down here. There we go. 1.81 terabytes. Well, that is definitely going to have plenty of space for anything we're going to need to put on this laptop, hopefully. All right, next, I'm going to look into and download some benchmark tools so we can really see where this thing performs at. And I think I'll get the same tools and set them up on the desktop so we can kind of compare last gen, well, last gen before last gen. So two gens ago, my desktop's a 5900 Ryzen 9. So it's the 5000 series. This is a 6000 series laptop. So we're going to see how the two compare. Okay, so I thought I'd do the benchmark portion with a rendering of heaven benchmark playing in the background. So the first thing we have is the multi-core tests for both Cinebench R23 for both the desktop and the laptop. So the desktop was pretty straightforward. On the multi-core, the idle temp was about 68C. It ended up topping out at about 83C. And as you can see here, our Cinebench R23 score for multi-core came in just over 17,000 points. And it kind of shows on the graph here where we came in compared to other systems. You know, the top end being a Ryzen Threadripper, which those are just super beefy systems. That's like probably like the highest score they have, period. So you can see we came in uh, just slightly above a Ryzen Threadripper. 16 core 3.4 gig but basically it just gives you like a comparison to other systems and where your where your computer lands at so now when we look at the multi-core for the laptop 
here's our score right here. We came in at 13,000, so about 4,000 less than the desktop. And that's to be expected because this was a test for the processor. So the laptop, when I was noticing the test running on that, the temperature went straight to 93C and it held that temp the whole time. The CPU frequency kept constant between 3900 and 4000 megahertz. So even though the temp was running at that high 93C, it didn't seem to need to start throttling back the frequency, which is really good. Ran that test much better than I expected. After the test was over, temps dropped right back down to 55C. So the laptop is doing its cooling job and it, even though it was holding at 93C during that whole test, it didn't throttle anything back. So now comparing the single core tests, our desktop came in much better on the graph. It came in at 14, just over 1400 points and the desktop temperature never really surpassed 75C during the single core test. Now, when we look at the laptop score for single core, what really surprised me is it came in higher than the desktop score. We came in at 1,441 points on the test. A very good score for single core processes on Cinebench R23. Now running the single core render, temp slowly climbed and it leveled out between 75 and 83C. Uh, peak temperature was at 86 for a very short amount of time. CPU frequency was holding much higher at around 4300 megahertz. Uh, again, CPU frequency remained consistent during this test, so there was no throttling due to temps. All right, so now let's look at the Heaven benchmark for the laptop. Heaven actually performed very well considering the built-in RTX 3050 video card. I didn't expect this out of the laptop considering it's only a four gig model as well. Our average frames per second came in at 94.6. You know, minimum frames per second was at 45.3, maximum was over 200. So our overall score for Unique Heaven benchmark ended up being 2383. Now I ended up running the desktop test twice because I was really confused by the first test. We actually scored lower than the laptop, but I realized because I was doing this rendering with OBS in the background, that took a lot of the performance away. So you can see this was the test for the desktop while running OBS. And now this was the test without running OBS. Much higher score, 101 frames per second average, 2568 for the score. Our max frames per second was only at 165 because that's what I have my graphics settings capped at on the computer from when I was running Diablo beta weekend. Uh, my monitor refresh rate is only 165, so that's why I capped my FPS on this system at that. But you see our minimum was 50.7, which actually is just slightly higher than the laptop's 45.3. So again, the laptop really surprised me with the performance on this test. So when running heaven, the laptop held temperature between 73 and 75 C, keeping a consistent FPS, as I already said. CPU temps running during that test were around 77 to 80. 87 was the hot spot temp. So still not as high as when I was running Cinebench R23, but this also isn't as hard of a test on the system as Cinebench, but either way, laptop came in really solid on that test. So the last test we ran was 3D Mark, and our desktop came in at just over 13,000. And what I really like about this score is it gives you your score, what the average score for that is it, it, it classifies all the scores based on the same configuration. So for running my exact CPU and GPU combo. The average score was 13,537. So we actually scored lower than the average, but I also don't have anything dialed in. I don't have any fan curves set. I don't have the graphics card under volted to get slightly better performance out of it. I'm sure if I tweak the desktop, I could get that score up. The best that my combo of processor and graphics card has scored on the system is well over 2,000 points, oh, over 2,500 points higher. So there's definitely room for improvement with the with the desktop on this score, but let's see how the laptop compared. The laptop only came in at 6,000, just over 6,000, 6173. So it didn't do that great on the time spy test. I noticed the frames per second were a lot lower on this test, but when you look at the average and the best, 
we didn't come that much lower in than the average, and we can't really tweak too much. I do have MSI Afterburner installed, so I can tweak a few things with the graphics settings, and I might do that in the future. But the best was only about 700 points higher. So all in all, this was probably the one test where I thought the laptop underperformed. Okay, so that is all the benchmark tests done and complete. So overall opinion of this laptop, I think this laptop is an excellent value for the price. And I was worried before I got this video out that the price would not still be at that $799 when I first showed it off in the end of the last video. But I double checked on Best Buy's website and currently this laptop is still running at that $799 price point. I have not seen it in store, so I don't know how long that price is going to be good for. But for what you're getting for this, the Ryzen 9 6800, the RTX 3050 Ti, so far from what I've seen from this, this is an excellent laptop for the value. I'm going to link everything in the description down below. The laptop, the RAM upgrade that I put in here, as well as the SSD. And yeah, I'm going to give this thing a test run on Diablo 4 on the beta weekend. Just to put a game up to it and really give it a little bit of a test. Because right now, the only games I've really ran, other than the benchmark tests, has been Minecraft. So I want to actually give it something to struggle, because I know that Diablo 4 was really struggling with the 8 gigs of video memory on my desktop because that game is very video memory hungry. So I want to put this 4 gig video card to the test and see how it does. But this video's already run over 25 minutes, so we're going to cut it off here now. I hope you guys all have a good one, and my name is Agro, and I gotta skate. Later!